Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's press conference. We'll start with our manager and then move on to the player after. If you need a translation, there's a simultaneous translation service available. If you haven't got a headset, if you move to the back, there'll be some more headsets available and you'll be able to listen to a simultaneous translation of today's press conference. If you'd like a question, please raise your hand and we'll come round. There is two people on either side with microphones. Please move the microphone along once you've used it. We're going to start today's press conference at the front here with Nazar Kinsella. Hi, Graham. Um, I Hi. just wanted to ask you about the team news, uh, who's available for this match, who's, who's fit, and, um, you know, with, with Eduard Mendy, um, could he come back in if he, if he is fit, or, or would you stick with Kepa as, as maybe the number one from now on? Uh, well, Eddie's um, been training with the team the last few days, so he's made good progress. So he'll be in the he'll be in the squad, which is great news for us. It's really important to have as much competition for places as we can. So great to have him back. Um, Georgie felt a little bit of discomfort in his uh, abdominal area against Crystal Palace, but it's trained today, so we'll see how he reacts to that. Take a decision um, later on today. Uh, Kai had a slight feeling as well, but again, trained today. So apart from that, we're um, we're, we're all okay. Um, Engie's training more, more and more, uh, not fully, but getting closer. So that's really positive. So um, that's about it, I think. Okay, uh, Moose at the front here. Can go on the side. That's it. And just at the front. Thank you. Hi Graham. Hi. You said before the Salzburg game you've never even been to a Champions League match. Well, this is perhaps, with respect to Salzburg, a step up in terms of glamour with, with AC Milan. What are you expecting differently tomorrow night from your opening night in the Champions League? Well, um, we're playing against a different team, a, a different way of playing. So, um, an absolute top team as well, um, as, were, as was Salzburg in terms of uh, how competitive they were. So every game is different, every football match is different, but um, we're looking forward to the game. Um, it's a, a massive challenge for us, a, an exciting challenge for us, one that the boys are really looking forward to and we have to be really, really good to, to get the result we want. Important to win home games in the Champions League. I'm not saying is this a must-win home game in the Champions League, but I mean it's one that you really could do with getting three points from. Well, that's what we try for, definitely. I think everybody will say the same thing. Um, important to win your home games, important to win if you can, but we're playing against, a, like I said, a, a top opponent, so we have to play well. We have to um, create a good atmosphere for, the, for our supporters to get behind us. So that's the job. We are, um, as I said, we're looking forward to it. Nick Pugh. Hi, Graham. Um, Hi. I know you don't talk about other teams' players, and I'm not asking you to do that, but... The, the new owners are obviously clearly very busy in terms of, I guess, short, medium and long-term planning for the squad and obviously a lot of things off the field as well, but also the squad kind of building in depth. I mean, from your perspective and in, as a new group of coaches, that must be... Was that important in your part of your thinking in terms of taking the job? But, and, and also, is it important now? Because it just seems that what the new owners are doing, um, they're keen to make a lot of progress quite quickly and that must be... Uh, must be a good, a good, you know, good thing for you to be aware of at least. Yeah. I mean, um, the the guys are ambitious, that's for sure, um, and they want to develop the club, they want to develop the team, as we all do. I think I always remember, or I, I never forget that my job as a is a head coach, which is to develop the players that are here, and uh, and then to work with the club to align the resources we have to make good decisions when transfer windows open. But predominantly, my job is to help the players that are here, and that's what we've been doing. You know, we haven't seen them that much, um, but the last few days has been really positive, I think. And um, you know, I need to focus on that, helping the guys that are here. Jeremy Langdon. Yeah, hi, Graham. Hi. Just following on from that, there's a lot of talk about Christopher and Kunku on his way to Chelsea next season from RB Leipzig. Um, is there anything you could say to that? No, as I said before, and you know, Jeremy, my answer is. I don't speak about players that aren't Chelsea players. If you want to ask about any Chelsea players, I'm quite happy to speak about them. But 
it was uh, the same at Brighton. You get linked to a lot of players and uh, there's a lot of names out there and you can imagine it gets uh, escalated when you're a club like Chelsea. But, um, yeah, I'll speak about uh, Chelsea players and not comment on anybody else. So just on one of them, Conor Gallagher's made a great uh, case for starting, hasn't he, against Milan? He has, yeah. He had a fantastic impact. The impact that we, w we want our substitutes to have. As I said after the game, he's been a top, you know, he's a top person. Uh, great in the group. And he's, he's fighting to play, so that's that's great for me. Tom Body. Hi, Graham. Hi. Um, you said about Kante being back and, uh, well, sorry, training more and more and that being a big positive. Um, he's obviously been out for a while again with injuries and in January, because of his contract situation, he can sign uh, or speak to other clubs. Just wondered where you sat on his future, whether you wanted to see him, I don't think we've spoken about it yet, whether you want to see him staying at Chelsea for the long term? Well, my, my focus at the moment is to, to help him rehabilitate in a good way so that he's available for us, he's available on the pitch because when he's on the pitch he's a huge asset for us. Um, the other stuff is, is between, you, you know, is between the club and, and him. But um, my focus is to help him get fit, get him uh, enjoying his football. Because as I said, uh, there's not many players in, in world football like, like NG. So the quicker he's back for us, the better. So that's my, that's where, that's where I leave my focus. Gentlemen there. Hi, Graham. Hello. Guillermo Ray for Diario As. Uh, we are talking about signings. Uh, I know that you don't speak about other players from other teams, but now uh, the news about Cristiano uh, are coming out again, and I would want to know if you had the chance, would you sign him? <laughs> again, we, we can we can spend all day asking these questions, and I'm not going to speak about anybody else. I mean. Uh, out of the greatest respect for the person you, you, you mention and anybody else that anybody else mentions. Um, whilst they're not our players, I, I don't speak about them. Matt Law. Hi, Graham. Hi. Um, a couple, if you don't mind. Sure. Just to go back to Nizar's point on the goalkeepers, are you, will you at some stage decide that one is a number one? Because we've always had a bit of a juggling act with Kepper and Edward, and are, at some stage, will you want one to be a clear number one? Well, I, th I think... Um, if you look at what we got over the next, is it six weeks? It's an incredible schedule. So uh, I'm in no rush to, to label anybody one or two or anything like that. I, I, firstly, I want uh, to help Kepper enjoy his football and play at a really good level, which I think he, he did against Crystal Palace. And then I want to help Eddie get you know, fit and ready to play, which he's, which he's done really well so far. And then, and then we've got two goalkeepers and then in an ideal world you want football to decide you know um, but we've got two ones that we really believe in and um, that's a good situation for us and then just secondly we're going to speak to Caladou in a second he hasn't played a minute for you yet and obviously arrived in the summer how do you sort of assess him in this situation at the moment I think he's um, well firstly I, I've been really impressed with him as a, as a person he's, he's honest he, he understands um, his situation in terms of uh, He's had to wait a little bit to, to play, which uh, um, every player will say they're, they're not so happy with, but it's how you respond. His response has been fantastic. Very, very uh, hard working, very honest, trained really well. Um, I think he's come from uh, a club and a, a country where he was very uh, familiar with and comfortable in and making a step into the Premier League. It's not so, not so easy. Things have happened in terms of changes at the club. So it's not the perfect situation for him. But um, he's a top player and he's a top person. So with that character, he'll, uh, he'll play an important role for us, that's for sure. John Selfie. Hi, Graham. Hi. What did you learn from that first Champions League game? Is it a different ball game to your normal domestic match? What did you take from that and learn from that? Um, yeah, I think there is a, there is a difference. Um, I mean, I've only had two games, so that, that's how strange it is in terms of the time that I've been here. Um, I enjoyed it. It's as, as I'd expect. It's a it's a it's a it's a, a real challenge if you if you drop your level. Um, sometimes you can get away with it, but against the, the very best teams, and you know these teams are, then they can punish you, and that's what you'd expect. That's that's what's exciting about the competition, I think. Just one other on Ngolo Kante. You're having to be careful 
the way you bring him back, he's had so many injuries recently that you can't, you don't rush him back too soon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just a case of building him up, and then um, it won't be a case of oh, now he's fit and now he can play 90 minutes every three days. You know, we have to be careful with how we uh, build his minutes up. That's the next challenge. It's okay rehabilitating. It's now it's game time, and how do you get game time in the Premier League? Bit by bit, I think. So we have to be patient with him, but. Um, we're, we're, we're under control with that, I think, and we'll do our best. Jacob Steinberg. Um, in, in terms of N'Golo, you've seen the impact, the positive impact that he can have on the side when he's fit and, and on form, and previous managers have had maybe a bit of an issue in terms of the midfield when he's not there. I mean, you went for a, for a back four the first time on, uh, on the weekend against Crystal Palace. How did you feel that that worked without him? Do you think it's something that can work without in goal of playing because of the energy and the tackling ability and everything that he brings? Well, as I said, I mean, it's hard to replace someone like NG. He's, he's a world-class player. So any team that, that loses him is going to suffer a little bit. That's for sure. But um, it's up to the other players to take the step up and to find the solutions. Um, we've got a lot of games coming up. N limited time on the training pitch. So from a working perspective, is isn't so straightforward. But... Um, if I look at the options that we've got, even though there's not a direct replacement, there are other solutions in there, so we have to find the right one. Okay, gentleman there. Hello. Uh, there's an ongoing debate in Italy now running about Rafael Leao. Antonio Cassano, former national team player, said he's just a normal player. He couldn't make the difference in Premier League and the top level. Other people in Italy are thinking he's just the best player playing in Italy right now. What do you think? Will you be ready to, to make the difference here in Premier League? Or is you know not enough good still to, to do it? Thank you. Well, I've been really impressed with him whenever I've watched the games. Um, he's making a difference for AC Milan. He contributes to how they uh, attack, how they score. Um, so, you, you know, it's just to say congratulations to him for that. He's a, he's a top player. Um, in terms of what happens in the future, who knows what, whether he can do this or not. He's got the capability, that's for sure, from what I'm seeing him. He's, he's affecting games at the highest level against top opponents. OK, we've got time for two more. James, Ollie, and then over there, James. Hi, Graham. Hi. Um, Aubameyang scored his first goal at the weekend. Um, and you said after that game that he'd had quite a traumatic summer. And I just wondered what you sort of said to help him through that and whether the fact that he's got off the mark now will sort of help him kick on and sort of put all that behind him. Well, I think it's just to acknowledge it and uh, chat to him briefly about it. But uh, you can imagine it's one of those things that you have to just move on from as quickly as you can. And it's, um, we, you know, we're, we're here to support and, and do all we can in that regard. But I think the best thing for him is to, is to you know, play football to um, put that incident behind him as quickly as possible and, and to be in a place where he feels comfortable and happy. And from what I've seen, uh, I think he, he feels that here. He's, um, he's acted really, really professionally. He's uh, always happy around the football club, uh, with the group, with his teammates. So I've been really impressed with him. Do you think mentally he did find it difficult initially? Well, I think he wouldn't, wouldn't be human if he, if he didn't. I mean, it's fairly horrific to be honest. So uh, without being a total psychologist, I think this, it's, a, it's a fair thing to, to assume. But like I said, I, I can only act in terms of uh, think about how he behaves and how he conducted himself with us. And he was, he's, been, he's been perfect. So, um, but at the same time, it's, he's still talking about something that isn't particularly nice, with, certainly when the family are concerned. Um, but he's been brilliant with us. Thank you. Okay, last question. Hi. Hi. Only a question. Uh, what do you think about Milan and Olivier Giroud? He's a, a young play for, uh, for, for us, for, uh, hmm. for Milan. I've, I've been really impressed. Um, a clear idea of how they want to attack, a clear idea of how they want to defend, um, different ways to score. Mm, Giroud is obviously someone that Chelsea Football Club know very well. He's a fantastic player. Um, plays the game in a really good way I think uses his quality uses his strengths uh, is an important player for AC Milan and yeah I'm looking forward to playing the game it's a, it's a top team 
and um, we have to be really, really good to get the, 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 the result that we want. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Cheers.